Krypton. Once a great planet now stands on the brink of destruction. I, Maximus, the uh, Jorel, must try to save my son Cal by sending him off planet with all our civilization's genetic knowledge hidden in his tiny baby pants. If I can get home and put him inside our last pod, he'll be safe. As long as we put enough milk in with him, that should do the trick. It can't fail. Ah, General Zod. He wants to take over the planet which is falling to bits. What a loon. Ah, I trust his space dragon. Ah, senseless waste. Kelix, you drongo, help me get inside. I returned to find my home, besieged by General Zod and his fighters. I can't stand uninvited house guests. Well, the front door was locked using a puzzle so complex that only a machine like Kelix could possibly ever solve it. I hoped Lara and Cal were still safe inside. Zod had no idea of my true plans for the Codex, but he seemed determined to stop me at all costs. In some ways, you have to admire his persistence. Another fiery explosion with more of Zod's men trying to hunt me down. It was at this point I began to wish I'd come in through the back door. escape pod. I think he might need changing first, though. Zod again? Hasn't he got better things to do? Get a decent haircut? Or not the cradle? It took Lara and I ages to put that together. Sweetheart, can you remember where we put the instructions for that? Such damage. I had once considered naming my child Zod. Lara argued that we should call him Neil before we both settled for Cal. I definitely choose Neil before Zod now. I'd heard of rocking the cradle, but this was ridiculous. Repairing it would be vital. Our plan was to succeed. Rorak, one of Zod's most loyal henchmen and a formidable combatant. Shame smelled worse than a Rondor beast. Feora, a warrior so tough. She was rumored to have taken her vacations on what was left of Wakethor. was finally rebuilt. This was our only chance. Goodbye, my son. Remember to write. 
No, wait. Never mind. General Zod arrived at last. I couldn't let him stop our mission. Never thought that'd get off the ground. Good luck, son. Your mother's left a bunch of hologram doohickeys in the pod to teach you how to do stuff. And there's some holiday snaps from that trip to Kandor we took. Wherever you end up, make sure you wear plenty of sunscreen. So that's me and Mr. J having a discussion about chickens, roads, and tactical nukes. Just minding our own beeswax when we heard about this awesome party for the bad guy. So I says, hey, Puddin, how comes you never told me we was going to a party? And he says, we didn't get invited. I mean, how rude. Not that me and Mr. J ever waited for an invite or nothing, but it's nice to be asked, you know? Ew, so drab. I mean, all that black. Is this a party or a wake? You know what I think, Mr. J? I think this needs a little invigorating redecoration. Let's get to work, Mr. J. We'll show Bat Brain how to throw a real party.
Button's dreamy smile is way better than that boring old bat. Hello. You all settled in? Right then, I will begin. My name is Alfred. Let me get you up to speed, son. Rachel, Bruce's ex, has herself a new man. Poor Bruce. I really thought they'd last the distance. I even got myself a new hat. This fella, Harvey Dent, got himself into a right pickle. He's only gone and passed himself off as the Batman. Dent the Batman? He's having a laugh. I mean, he's a big man, but he's out of shape. For Bruce, this is a full-time job. With Harvey Dent setting himself up as Bane, it wasn't long before the Joker made himself known. Blimey, stands out in the crowd, doesn't he? Police tried to take down the Joker, but he was just too much for them. Even their fancy helmets and bulletproof vests appeared to be no match for his nurse's uniform. If he ever tries a ridiculous stunt like this again, 
I think Dead will plan for lower speed chases. Hang in there, my son. Batman's on his way. I don't know. What's Rachel thinking about this fella? Who am I to tell her? I've heard this guy can be a bit insincere. A bit... what's the expression? You know, too fit. Is that a bazooka? Go on, Master Bruce, get in there, son! Oh, Bruce, not another car! This dead character. I mean, with all due respect, he isn't a patch on Master Wayne. Underneath all that rubber and armor plate, Bruce is a very sensitive guy. Not a lot of people know that. Oh, Bruce. You are only supposed to blow the Lego doors off. Well, what do you know? Gordon's alive. It's just as well, because Batman needs some help to dig the Joker out of the rubble. Although most of the plan had to be improvised, Bruce felt confident that the exact parts he needed would be found conveniently close by. Suddenly, Batman and Gordon were attacked by the Joker's goon. If only they'd had some sort of crime-fighting sidekick to help them. Joker's voice was muffled under the rubble, but I do believe he was trying to tell Batman how he got his scarf. It's strange because I don't remember him wearing one. Batman continued to build. The Joker asked him, why so serious? To which Bruce replied, I'm Batman. I'm always serious. I don't think that fully answered his question. <laughs> I remember Batman asking the Joker why he was wearing a nurse's uniform. He babbled something about fan service, which, to tell you the truth, still puzzles me somewhat.
Well, that came out as well as could be expected. Gordon's made commission, Joker's in prison, and Bruce managed to save half of Rachel's boyfriend. That Joker, he was a tough nut. I have to say, of all the people in Lipstick Bruce has been up against, he was definitely the hardest. Now I've got to get back and put the tea on. Master Wade will be starving after all that. Well, I don't know. He can defuse a thermonuclear warhead, but can't grill his own fish fingers. My name is Oliver Queen. I've been stranded on an island with only one goal. Survive. Survive, and one day use a proper toilet again. I must fulfill my father's dying wish to use the list of names he left me and bring down those who are poisoning my city. To do this, I must become someone else. I must become something else. Something green and pointy. And arrowy. So far I've learned how to give a bowl of water a good slapping, but my training is by no means complete. Like what if I'm attacked by a bowl of soup? Not watery soup. That really thick, thick pea soup. Whole different fighting style to water. Anyway, I'm not alone on this island. I've met another survivor, Slade Wilson. He's okay. He just likes to take his top off a little too much and hits me in the face a lot. But he assures me it's for my own good. He's agreed to train me to fight and to survive. That day, Slade and I decided to visit a nearby campsite that belonged to our not-so-friendly neighbors. We would need to trust each other if our plan was to succeed. For members of the continuity police out there, sometimes I like to imagine myself back on the island wearing my arrow costume, okay? My experiences on the island changed me. Sometimes they even changed me into a small, plastic version of myself. Slade had changed too, but he always had a plan to survive. There's no doubt in my mind that being around Slade made me stronger. I hardly ever climbed waterfall. Danger was all around the island. You always had to watch your step. It was Yao Fei's bow. Slade had hidden it for safekeeping, but today, we needed to put it to good use. I remember thinking at the time that my archery had greatly improved, as well as wondering how Slade had been able to construct such an elaborate shooting gallery. We were ready to take on the bad guys. But it turned out they were ready to. It was going to be tricky to get past unless we thought of something. Luckily, Slade was extremely skilled when it came to not being seen. turned out to be a setup. They were waiting to ambush us like guests at some twisted surprise birthday party without any presents, cake, or ice cream. Oh, my God. 
last, we spotted our prize. A stockpile of weapons that, for us, would make getting off the island next to impossible. We had to destroy them while we had the chance. So there you have it. Another harrowing experience back on the island that made me into who I am today, into what I've become today. Now I gotta go. Felicity and Diggle worry when I flash back for too long. Remember, keep your arms straight and let go. Okay, you scum. Code Red. We are under attack. Time to earn those expensive, explosive collars I bought you all. Sensors indicate an intruder has entered from the east wall, fluttered around the security light for a curiously long time, before finally breaking into the compound. Get out there and stop him! Believe me, you don't want to wait for my mind-blowing motivational speech. This is Amanda Waller with a Bell Rev Penitentiary status update. With the prison under attack, I've initiated a complete lockdown. Members of my squad have been tasked with identifying those responsible and taking them out, whether they want to or not. With the lockdown in effect, all prisoner cells have been completely sealed. It's a good thing my team are used to getting past the occasional locked door. I gotta admit, Deadshot is a great leader, even if he doesn't seem to care that he's a great leader. The squad's going to need him if we're going to track down the attackers. Harley Quinn. My favorite inmate. I can't deny she's got her uses. Especially with that giant hammer of hers. Wait, how did she even get that in here? King Shark doing? Must be something going on underground. For the sake of our intruders, I hope King Shark's been fed today. Did I forget to mention that King Shark actually is a shark? He likes to remind people about that. I'm starting to think that Task Force X is causing more damage to this place than any potential attackers. Looks like I'll have to cancel tomorrow's basketball game.
I take back what I said before. Whoever or whatever broke in here must have had one heck of a party. Deathstroke. He should be able to help us get past. Not that I'd trust Slade Wilson as far as I could throw him. Last mission, team. Our targets should be right behind this door. <laughs> Gentlemen, the danger has been neutralized and identified as a Mr. Drury Walker A.K.A. Cameron Van Cleer, A.K.A. Killer Moth. No, seriously. Unable to access our computer system due to IT not being one of his special powers, he resorted to the usual monologue, detailing his plans to expose the squad in some kind of half-baked revenge plot. His moving speech allowed the squad time to effectively flank and then squash this insect. Needless to say, the whole affair was moth ado about nothing. Me and Bizarro. Bizarro hero. Help Superman. Superman say as reward, Bizarro get on planet all to himself, very far away from other people. He say not helping, helping. Bizarro not understand, but hate new planet and make city to live in called Rocktropolis. Now very, very good man want Wreck Rocktropolis, take energy from planet, make Bizarro happy to see city in peril. So me steal LexCorp replicator gun, make own league of friends. Bazzaro, Bizarra, Cizaro, and Green Zaro. Apart we fight Dark Side, save planet. Bizarro League backwards! Dark side hurts city's ends. Bizarro League must not help them. Slowly! Must get people back up to ground. That better? We am make such bad team. Them not heroes. Bizarro League fight to make Superman ashamed of us.
Bizarro League needs you, Batzaro. You world's worst detective. <laughs> Rocktropolis people am free. Save more Rocktropolis people. Bizarro League now have Bizarro Mobile. Oh, Bizarro Mobile not last long. Watch out for Big Hurdy Laser. Bizarro League need to be very careless. Them. Bizarro League save Rocktropolis! Yay! Em did it! Just when Em thought all won, Superman and friends turn up, help us badly. Together! Worst of friends! Darkseid not show face again. Bizarro and very ungrateful for help. Rapchopolis unsafe once again. 